This video is aimed at people with chronic lung conditions in order to help you manage your own lung condition better. It provides exercise and education that hopefully you'll be able to do at home. We'll start with a wee warm up which will help to get your circulation moving and to stretch all your muscles. Just while you're sitting in your seat, just get on any music you fancy and just start by tapping your toes. Just get something that you quite like doing, but you're just trying to get the circulation moving in your legs. A wee tap of your toes and try and see if you can tap the other toe. Put on some music that you enjoy listening to and see if you can go up onto your toes. Give them a wee stretch and down, stretch and down. Stretch and down and see if you can just tap the toes, tap along to some music that you quite like dancing to, you can pretend you're dancing and give your ankles a wee stretch back and forward so that the whole ankles had a good stretch and you're getting all these muscles at the bottom of your legs working. Okay, now let's see if we can just lift the knees up. So you're getting your, almost like you're doing a wee march on the spot, but in the chair. If you can do it fast, do it a wee bit faster. If you can only manage a wee bit slowly, then it's just good to move the legs and get them moving. You want to get the circulation moving in your legs. Okay. Okay, and have a wee rest from that. And we'll just stretch our arms up and open up our chest. And down and stretch down and stretch and down and give them a good stretch and now see if you can stretch them out to the side and back and stretch and back stretch and stretch and we're going to just do a wee twist of our top of our body and back twist twist and twist and see if you can twist the other way And maybe just give your elbows a wee bend and stretch, just loosen off all the joints so that you're ready to do some more exercises that we're going to show you in the DVD. Just get everything, the circulation moving around your body, get all the muscles and joints loosened off. Okay, and we're just going to go to our hips and give the right leg a wee stretch and back, stretch. And back, stretch, and back, stretch, and back, and maybe one last stretch. Now do the same with the left, give it a wee stretch, 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 and stretch. Now see if you can take your right leg and just kick out your leg, get your muscle work as if you're kicking a football something you don't mind maybe. <laughs> Give it a good kick, let your muscles get working. Nice big kick and try the same with the left one, just give it a good kick. You should feel that your legs are all been moving, everything's got the muscles working, the joints working, circulation moving. Okay and just have a wee rest. Bells warming up, you need to do some stretches. So we're just going to do a few stretches just to get everything nice and stretched before you do the rest of the exercises. Start with your shoulders and just up to your ears and down. Nice slow stretch and down and stretch and down. Now with your arms, just take them together and stretch right up and open up your chest and back down. Nice slow stretch and back down and a nice slow stretch and back down now when you're sitting in your chair just take your leg out and pull your toes up and just gently pull your foot up and down so all the muscles down the back of your leg are getting a really good stretch nice and slowly you can do this even when you're watching television you can just stretch all the muscles at the back of your leg and we'll swap legs and just give the other one a nice slow stretch. Again, just before you do anything, it's better to have stretched so that you don't get any injury. Nice slow stretch. And relax. Take your right arm, give it a wee stretch across and give it a hug. And 
and just hold. Now take your left one and just hold. Nice stretch. And relax. So take the right arm behind and just give it a wee gentle push. Give it a stretch. And the same with the left. Nice slow stretch. And relax. Now you have a wee stretch to one side. And back up. And a wee stretch to the other side. And one to the right. And one to the left. And now you should be ready to do your exercises. is exercise and education for people that have chronic chest conditions. It's designed to improve your level of fitness and your quality of life and can help you learn to cope with your condition better. Often when we have chronic chest problems it's easy to get into a cycle where we, we don't do much because we think we're going to be breathless and then because we think we're going to get breathless we don't do very much and our muscles get weak and we get more breathless and it's very hard to break that cycle and try to think about doing some exercise. Some of the benefits we would get by exercising are that we would feel better because we would release our endorphins. Our endorphins are hormones that make us feel good, so when we start to exercise we feel better. It improves our exercise tolerance, we get fitter, um, improves the strength in our muscles. By doing exercises our muscles get stronger and our joints get more mobile by exercising and both of these together can help us decrease our risk of falling by improving our balance um, which is very important if you've been taking steroids and your bones maybe are quite osteoporotic it's important that we don't fall. And circulation can be improved by doing exercise because the blood starts to move around our body better. 
our breathlessness can get better and that we exercise more and we improve our feeling of being less breathless when we exercise. When we do our exercises we also can get up lots of phlegm. Often when people start to exercise the phlegm starts to come up as well. It's recommended that everybody should do at least about 30 minutes a day. 30 minutes can be quite a lot though and this can be broken down into three times maybe 10 minute slots. To get the benefits you should really exercise every day. The top tip really would be to try and break it down into whatever size you could manage. If you can manage 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the afternoon, maybe 10 minutes at night or even just 5 minutes more often throughout the day, whatever is going to suit you. When you stop smoking, the benefits can take as little as 20 minutes to kick in and that's fast. After 20 minutes your blood pressure will start to come down and the circulation in your heart will improve. In the following days, your pulse and heart rate drops, carbon monoxide and oxygen levels in the blood return to normal, and your sense of taste and smell will sharpen. In the weeks and months that follow, coughing and shortness of breath decrease, your lung function will increase, and your risk of heart attack begins to reduce. There's a reduction in the risk of respiratory infection, and your skin should look much healthier. Within a year, your lung function can increase between 5 and 10%. And after five years, your risk of a heart attack will almost be half. Beyond five years, risk of stroke, cancer and death from chronic obstructive pulmonary disease is reduced considerably. Now, we know stopping smoking can be hard, but if you use treatments, for example, nicotine replacement therapy and get support from a trained advisor, you're four times more likely to stop smoking and stay stopped. You can get help to stop smoking from a number of places and both treatment and the support are free no matter what age you choose to help you stop and we would urge you to consider attending a service for support. You can do it and we can help. Within NHS Worth Valley we have drop-in clinics, locality clinics, all local community pharmacists provide free help, free treatment and support and there's even a service in the hospital. diaphragm is a large muscle that sits down here at the bottom of our chest and um, just below our lungs. Now in normal breathing what should happen is that our diaphragm comes down. As it comes down it pulls your lungs down, enables the air to come right down into the bottom of your lungs. That enables you to get more air in. As you breathe out the diaphragm recoils and pushes all the air out. This is the most efficient way of breathing. If we use a diaphragm, it means that we get more air in and we're not as short of breath. A lot of people with chest problems, however, start to use the top of their chest. They start to use all the wee muscles in their neck, all their accessory muscles. As they do this, they don't tend to use their diaphragm and it's the top of their chest that they breathe with. And that's a very inefficient way and these muscles tire really, really quickly. So we want you to start thinking about being able to use your diaphragm, becoming aware of where it is and starting to use the diaphragm. This will enable us to improve an exercise tolerance, so during things like climbing the stairs, walking, we can start to use our diaphragm to breathe with rather than starting to use our shoulders and all our wee muscles at the top of our neck. If we're doing breathing control we need to practice it. It's often that we've got into a bad habit and we do use all our muscles at the top of our, head, our neck and it's very hard for us sometimes to start using the lower part and so we need to find time to practice it to change the way that we, we breathe. We need to persevere. We need to then incorporate into our activities of daily living like when we're out walking, when we're climbing the stairs. The important thing is not to hold your breath when you're doing activities as well. And remember that you're always in control of your breathing and you need to learn to be able to work at your own breathing, work out where you're breathing in your chest, whether it's at the top or the bottom, and being able to change that. Symptoms that you might feel are feeling generally unwell, increased breathlessness, increased cough, or increased sputum production, and the change in the colour and the thickness of your phlegm. If you have an exacerbation, you're looking for two of these three symptoms, then you should be getting help. If you're more breathless and wheezy than you normally are, if you've got increased amount or thickness in sputum, or if your sputum has changed colour. You should contact your GP or your practice nurse or the community pharmacist as they will supply you with antibiotics or steroids. 
So if you keep antibiotics or steroids in the house, then you should start them as soon as possible and make sure you always complete the course of treatment. If you feel you're extremely short of breath at rest, quite sleepy or a bit muddled, you need to discuss with the GP practice or the practice nurse what your emergency procedure would be. And if you stay in a rural community, then you know it might be contacting 999. If you need to call a GP between Monday and Friday, it's 8am to 5pm or contact NHS 24 111. The first medications that we tend to start patients on are inhalers uh, and there's two types of inhalers. There's inhalers that will relieve symptoms and there's inhalers that will prevent symptoms. With the reliever inhalers you can use them when you need them or in anticipation of needing them. The preventer inhalers they need to be taken regularly. They won't work if you just take them uh, when you remember. They need to be taken on a regular basis because they're working on the underlying condition that's causing the chest complaint. So taking them as prescribed is extremely important. Uh, we ask that your inhaler technique is checked on an annual basis and that's because we can get into bad habits of uh, not breathing at the right time when you're taking in your inhaler, uh, not doing the right thing with your inhaler and it's to make sure that you're still managing that inhaler to the best of your ability and that the most of the drug that you can get is getting out of the inhaler into your lungs where it can work. So checking that inhaler technique is an important thing that you can, that you can allow to happen. Uh, we have other medications that we will use to manage your chest complaint. Uh, we've got oral drugs that can help open up airways but they're not always suitable for all patients. And in particular we've got drugs which will help reduce down how thick your sputum can be. If you're particularly troubled by viscous uh, thick secretions and thick phlegm, then there are medications that we can use that can help reduce how difficult that is to cough that up. We ask you to attend an annual review with your practice nurse and that's to really go over how you're managing your medicines, how you're managing your inhalers and see if there's anything else that we can add into your therapy to make things easier for you. If we have to give you oral steroids and lots of courses of oral steroids to manage the background inflammation that's going on, then we need to look after your bones. Uh, and we do that by putting you on some medication which helps support your bones and make them stronger. So if you're on lots of courses of steroids over a, a year's period, or if you're on oral steroids every day, then talk to your GP about as to whether or not uh, bone protection would be necessary for you. And then we look, ask you to have vaccinations. The flu vaccination is an annual vaccination, protects you against flu, can't give you flu, it can make you feel a wee bit fluey for a few days after you've had it, but it can't actually give you the flu because it's not a live vaccine. It's important to have it because when you've got an underlying chest complaint and you take flu on top, then you really are eh, particularly unwell with it. And there's a one-off vaccination that we suggest that you have which is a pneumococcal vaccination. Some of the tips are to find a quiet place, get into a comfortable position with your arms and legs supported, close your eyes, concentrate on your breathing, and we've talked a lot about your breathing already, take nice deep breaths through your nose and exhale slowly through pursed lips. Learn to recognise when you're tense, to make a fist, Squeeze your hands really, really tightly and feel that tension. Then slowly open your fingers and feel the tension leaving your hands and that will make you lighter. Now we can le learn to relieve tension all over our body simply by contracting and relaxing all of the muscles in our body. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it has encouraged you to start exercising. If you enjoyed it and you want to continue exercising there are some links along with the video to be enable you to maybe go to some of the gyms or some exercise classes. <laughs>